This horse racing telecast is brought to you by Lexus. Afternoon, team. Take a seat. Now, you've all decided to do a Masters in Winks. It's a great choice. She is a phenomenon, the likes of which we may never see again. So she transcends racing, she transcends sport. She's now part of Australian history. To be watched, to be studied, to be celebrated, to be marvelled at, and to be enjoyed. So what do we know? Her father, her sire. Street cry, sir. Correct. Out of? Vegas showgirl. Second fall, sir. You won 32 of 38. That's a winning percentage of? 84%. Of her six starts when she didn't win, how many of those starts did she run second? Three times, sir. These apples. OK, career prize money? 19.8 million. Exactly. What was she purchased for? 230,000. So, as a return on investment, what are we talking? 86 times, sir. Boom. So if you had 10 on her at the start of the 28 consecutive wins and let it roll, how much would you have in your pocket now? You would be $481,000 richer, sir. Yeah. Bowman! Pay attention. Her physiology is exceptional. She takes 2.7 strides per second. How many per minute? 162. Correct. And that's why she can do this. But here she comes. Winks right down the outside. Right over the top, Winks. Oh, she's a wrecking ball, Winks. But this is a blitz. It's a Winks blitz. OK, time for discussion. Of her 32 wins, which is considered her greatest? The Warwick Stakes. She missed the start by four lengths. about her first Cox Plate. Blew them away, track record time. What a win! Winks has bought in the Cox Plate. What about her last start? The Temple States. She looked done and dusted. Now Winks is storming home! Winks over the top! There isn't really an answer. The beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Now, some history. Only two horses have won the Cox Plate three times. Winks and... Kingston Town, sir. And what was his nickname? The King, sir. Correct. So today, the King could be usurped by the Queen. How fit. Any questions just to finish up? Sir, how do you beat her? So the scene is set at uh, Mooney Valley for the WS Cox Plate of 2018. Winx's WS Cox Plate. Is it for the win? Well, that's what we're all thinking and hoping, but it's a small field. But it's a very, very strong field, and she's going to start a prohibitive favourite, as she always does. Richard and also Francesca, um, 38,000 people here today. Tracker's favourite front runner so far today. There's a lot talked about that. Huey Bowman's already had a ride and a win today. He rode Libran in that race into third place. He's got his eye in. We know all of that. But the fact that horses have been going forward to win may change this race slightly. There's no doubt in my mind it threw a little spanner in the works for them. They, they had the race planned out in their mind and now the track is playing somewhat differently. So I, I don't think it'll change the way they ride her. It might make you set off a little earlier in the race than perhaps it was going to. But um, there's no doubt in my mind that, that that is playing on their minds at the moment. I think that the big unknown is the international horses, isn't it? We've seen them battle in action here in the Caulfield States. Ross Perfect we don't know so well here, but we know that he's a horse with incredible stamina. So he's going to be wanting to go forward. Will Ben Battle go forward? How far back can Winx sit? We know she's got that phenomenal turn of foot, but she might need it today. So let's have a look at that Corporal stakes we were talking about with Ben Battle. I mean, how strong he seemed at the end of this. They went, he's chasing down Honesman, he's got Blairhouse right on his back here, and we thought he was going to take him. And remember that Humidor and D'Argento are out wide behind them. Well, exactly. They're good form references, aren't they? Because you're thinking, how good is this form? Well, you've got Humidor, you've got D'Argento closing. Don't forget, Humidor ran to within, what, a length of Winks in the Cox Plate last year. They went a good speed in this race. The, the overall time was faster than the Turnbull, which Winks 
Wings won, and Ben Battle had to really battle to the line, and Battle did. Tell us about Ross Trokovic. He's a bit of a wild card. We know that Aidan O'Brien's brought two other three-year-olds to this race, and they've both run great. Adelaide won it in 2014, and Highland Real ran third to Wings in 2015. Yeah, so he knows the kind of horse he needs to bring. Funnily enough, on, on, on pure form, on bare form, Rostropovich is a fair way behind those other two horses to come here. This was him winning a Group 3 at Leopardstown, beating Giuseppe Garibaldi and the King. Look, it was a, the first three were a good margin clear of the, of, the, of the next ones, but this form is not brilliant. But what about the second and the Irish star? Isn't it? his father Robbie and his grandfather Eddie terrific trainers in Victoria so not far away and out of the horses coming into the mounting yard for the 2018 WS Cox Plate and there she is getting close it oh so well but you can see the impact of what today means Royal Randwick by the way continues to watch those races go to Sky Channel to watch those races at Royal Randwick now go to Sky Channel because our focus is here at Mooney Valley it's been a well it's been a 12 month build up it, it has from the moment she went across the line in front of Humidor we sort of thought well will she be back for a fourth could she possibly keep that unbeaten run going both those things thought nah probably not at that stage she's done enough She's just phenomenal. And those tears from Debbie, th that's just pure pressure. That's uh, Lucky Winx doesn't feel that sort of pressure. She just, she doesn't really, she would understand why she was here. She understands what she's about to do. She understands what her job is. But they don't feel the pressure that we feel. And she, she's visibly woken up a little bit there, hasn't she? We saw her earlier, she was half asleep in her stool, but now she's got the ears pricked. There's the saddles going on. There's Charlie Duckworth um, here saddling her on this side. As Chris Wallace says, it's so much part of the team. Yes, he's the, the head of the operation, and, um, and the owners are obviously so important, but all the people behind the scenes that keep Wings happy day in, day out, so important too. And those earmuffs are quite famous. Remember when they put them on her when they went into the barrier one day because she had a bit of a worry or two. And let's go and join uh, Daryl Braithford for one of the uh, real pleasures on any Cox Plate day. This is for Winks, the fourth time.
so a fabulous precursor for what is about to come and there is the wonder mayor she's been saddled up hamish as we look down there i mean we talked about the crowd so early in the day that were thronging around her waiting to see her and from where i'm standing uh, not that far away from where you are right now she looks to be calm she's so relaxed bruce i mean she is as you say neck by marvel she's a one-off She's a bit of a unicorn, but what is extraordinary about today is that it is all of us barracking for one outcome. We talked about it earlier, the Australian psyche is to barrack for the underdog, but not with this mess. She has everyone by her side willing her on. So Chris has just put the bridle on, Umid has helped out. Charlie, who's a big hand in the stable, has given some last minute touch-ups, got rid of all of the horses' bridles and gear to be immaculate, but the crowd is phenomenal. It's three, four, five, six deep. Everyone knows she's running all around Australia. TVs will be turned on. She's been the water cooler conversation for a long, long time. She's broken all the rules, all the records. She's looking at her tenth straight group one. I mean, it sounds silly just saying that, talking about any of her records out loud, and they sound pretty fanciful, but She's done it, but all of the records count for nothing. She's got two minutes to show us all again why she's the best. Maybe in history, maybe the best ever, and maybe for the last time. And I think that's why so many people I've spoken to today have travelled so far. People have driven from Perth, flown from Perth, from New Zealand, from America. They are here to say they saw her and they all want one result. Look at her there, Umit. He's all business, so is she, but the loose walk... Well, she's a phenom, a phenom, and we just hope we see a win today. Absolutely. So not long from the pre-parade ring and its quaintness and beauty to the parade ring itself. And that's where we'll be in just a moment. Winks Mania takes over. All those details and more coming up at six. This horse racing telecast is brought to you by Lexus. Proud sponsor of the Lexus Melbourne Cup. So the scene is set, isn't it? Now just waiting for the horses to go into the mounting yard, the jockeys to get on their back and to bring them through the tunnel onto the course for the 2018 WS Cox Plate with record prize money of $5 million up from three last year and uh, this Philly mare has won the last three. Roger, she was a dollar 22 15 minutes ago. What price is Wings? She's on this rift, Bruce. She's out to a dollar 24 and that's despite bets coming in at that dollar 22 mark. 40,000, 29,000, 100,000 as well, but she's out to a dollar 24. Ben Battle has also eased in the market. He's out to nine dollars 50, 18 dollars humidor, 26 Avilius and Rostropovich, 34 Dargento, Kings Will Dream 41 and 61 dollars for Savvy Cope. But Winks, dollar 24, as we said, last year she dumped a dollar 18. So value for the punters, Bruce. Thanks for that, Roger. Well, I'm guessing the last time you saw Ben Battle was at York and the International Stakes. How does he look to you, Cheska? Yeah, good guess, Bruce. I was there that day, and I thought going into that race, he had to have a really live chance because of his uh, Group 1 wins in Germany's Group 1 wins in, in, in Dubai as well. But he wasn't quite up to the level that day, and I wonder if it was just the, the, the tough 2,000 metres that saw him out. I think here in Australia, he's been really suited by the turning tracks. He's, he's quite an on-pace, quite a keen-going horse. And so Yashim Murphy's just going to need to settle him and make sure he gets home. The tactics are going to be fascinating. I imagine he'll be going forward because he is quite free running. Whether he settles in behind Rostropovich or nearby him, he's well drawn to, uh, to, to take all sorts of options. Yashim Murphy's only 23 years old. He's won 10 Group 1s. He's absolutely a jockey on the rise. Richo, 10 horses have gone from second one year to winning the Cox Plate the next. The most recent El Segundo. Could Humidor do it? Hey, wasn't he super? in this race last year, Humidor. He's got the Melbourne Cup winning strapper and Matty looking after Humidor today. He's right on his toes. He's got the blinkers on. Keep in mind, last year, he ran in the Caulfield Cup and then he came from 2,400 metres back to 2,000 metres. This year, it's been about one race and one race only. And Damien Lane draws outside Huey. I reckon he'll jump straight on Winx's backside. Can he come over the top? 
There she is. Kingsville Dream, Richo, has had exactly the same preparation that Humidor had last year when he finished second. That's, that's right, and there's a real X factor about this horse. How good is he? Well, we've seen the wait for age form certainly has him right in this race. He had so many excuses in a Caulfield Cup, yet somehow he picked himself up and ran in the top six. That was a huge run. He goes to the 2,000 metres from the 2,400 metres. He'll be fit. If he has any luck, he's right in this race because he's got so much upside. Well, Cheska Avilius runs in a Group 1 for the first time. He's unbeaten in Australia. He doesn't win by margins, but he's got a turn of foot. You summed him up pretty well there, Bruce. He's unbeaten in Australia, but bear in mind that they have been lesser races to this. He's up in Group 1 company here today, which he's likely to find a lot harder. But go back through his form um, in Europe, where it's just where he came from. He was trained by Andre Fab over there. And he was second in the pre Niel, which is a key arc trial to none other than Cracksman. That form reads really well. So wouldn't be a surprise to see him in the mix. And I have to say, he looks in incredible condition. His skin is absolutely gleaming. He's a, a big, imposing son of pivotal. It could be a little bit of a danger, this one. Yeah, he's a beautiful horse. He's been very well placed in Australia. James has placed him to absolute perfection here. Got him qualified for a Melbourne Cup. But he's turned up here today in the Cox Plate. He does have a turn of foot. I question whether he's met horses this good. In fact, I know he hasn't met horses that are this good before. How will he measure up? Well, it's his big test. So, Pat Ty there with... Uh... Pete's wife and, and Deb Capitas, Peter Ty in the middle with Hugh Bowman. D'Argento, his father famously won it twice, so you think. He's actually used the same four races that Winks over the years has used. The Warwick Stakes, the Theo Marks, the Epsom and the Caulfield Stakes on his way to this race. Yes, he's a Rose Hill Guineas winner at Group 1 level as a three-year-old over 2,000 metres. As a four-year-old, he's run in all the good races, the Winks Stakes, the Theo Marks, the Epsom and the, uh, the Caulfield Stakes in Melbourne here against Ben Battle. He passed half the field in that Caulfield Stakes from the rear. He is a horse that, that can wind up from the back. If he can get a soft ride into this race on the back of something going forward, he might be one who could cause a bit of an upset. I doubt if he can beat his stable mate, but he's a very good horse on the rise. So he come to wing. She's won 28 straight, 21 group ones. As we see Chris there, Stephanie. So all the emotion surrounding what's been such a long builder. Jessica, yeah, 28 straight. Look, each of her three wins, in a way, have been masterpieces. Two of them are race records, and the others by the biggest margin in the history of the race. <laughs> it's a phenomenal record, isn't it, Bruce? And it's interesting looking at her year on year, because the year she first won her Cox Plate, she was still quite a, a small, younger horse. She had a bit of furnishing to do, a bit of maturing to do. But look at her now as a seven-year-old. Not only is it remarkable, uh, the longevity, and the consistency that she's got, but she's really filled out into a big, strong mess. The, the crowd really getting excited here as Hugh Bowman gets the leg up. He himself, Richo, cool as a cucumber. Oh, cool as a cucumber. I think Winx hasn't seen you for a year, Chess, but I think she's recognised you straight no. away. <laughs> well, this mighty mare has defeated 65 Group 1 winners, part of her streak. She's about to add another two. If they go slow, she can sprint. She's too good. If they go fast, she's the best 2,000-metre horse in the world. Bring it on. Well, the father of this boat might be the best horse this century in Europe, Frankel. Yeah, the, the, the sire of uh, Rostropovich is Frankel. He's very, very well bred, this horse. He actually cost a fair amount as a youngster. Um, he is... Let me just assess him on form. He's got a bit to prove with these horses. We know he's on uh, en route to a Melbourne Cup. I know he's good over a more staying distance. He's going to have to put his best foot forward to mix it speed-wise with these horses. But I think they're quite confident on him. The Aidan O'Brien team, TJ Comerford here, who's uh, in charge of the horses. Um, but he'd have to be an each way chance at best. And Savvy Cope's the best mare in New Zealand, and she's a beauty. And her dad, also Richo, won a Cox play. That's right, and that was Savvy. She's right on her toes. She's making her way through the tunnel. And this big roar will certainly get her on her toes. Is the Livermore Classic good enough? Well, as a three-year-old filly, she won the New Zealand Oaks. She came over and was beaten by Unforgotten. But I think she had excuses there. I think she'll run a great race. But I think it's totally different gravy to what we're seeing right in front of you right now. 
now in this big crowd is watching Winx do one special lap around the uh, mounting yard and she'll be the last horse to make her way through the tunnel. Yes, some of the others, in fact, most of them have come onto the track as Winx has been given the honour of having a little break between Savvy Cope and her before she makes a grand entrance. The Cox Plate is wonderful for so many reasons, and this is one of them. The three races like none other, and that walk through the tunnel onto the track, and in her case, a date with some destiny, whether it's a shocking defeat or a glorious historic victory, is all in front of us now. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the track three-time Cox Plate winning mare, trained by Chris Waller, number six, Winx. for the first time in Honey Valley for her today. Just was back from the mounting yard. How does she look? Oh, she looks great, Bruce. She's just got such presence about her. Calm, professional, composed, a true athlete, a true champion, really. And going out here onto the track, she's uh, moving nicely down to the start. How the team have been able to, to just keep her happy, keep her ticking along. Because, you know, Richard, with these racehorses, it's always a fine line between... Uh, and um, keeping their, 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 their mind happy as well. A race can come unstuck from years of planning in one second. She puts her foot down the wrong way, gets spooked by something and kicks the fence. It can happen in a second. So it's always heart in your mouth stuff until they get out on the track. The trainer feels like, OK, my job's done. Now it's up to the barrier attendants and the jockey now to get her around safely. Let's go back to you, Hamish. Thanks, Bruce. Oh, everything's been done, Chris. Time for the mayor to do the talking. Yeah, exactly. Um, we've done our bit, and um, she's made it look easy because the, the great horse that she is. So, um, yeah, once Huey's aboard, um, the next part of the of the story um, unfolds, and Huey's just that perfect rider for her time and time again. And look, you never never want to tempt fate, but um, he's such a collected person and. And he'll analyse problems that go through the race and and make sure that he's in the best position he thinks he can be in. And um, then you just got to hope for a little bit of luck. What were the instructions to you? Mm, Let him go? Yeah, just keep it simple. Um, we really don't overanalyse it um, because it just complicates things. If you, if you want to try to follow certain horses or be worrying about pace, track bias, wind, I'd find it just complicates things. So... Q's got a job, and, and that's just to get her into the barriers, get her out safely, and let the race unfold. And 28 times in a row, it's worked. Go make some history. It's five o'clock. <laughs> Thanks very much. Thanks, everybody. All right on the death, basically, for Chris Waller. Let's go to Ladbrokes for the market mover, Roger. Well, there's no market mover as such, Bruce, but certainly Wink. She touched a dollar twenty-six. She's a dollar twenty-five now. One punter in the last minute has had sixty-five thousand at a dollar twenty-five. She is the one they want. So a longer price than she was this time last year. And I think that's got a bit to do with the quality of the race. Ben Battle obviously under the ten dollars, and he's probably helping to push her out. Yeah, he would be. But you wonder how many people here today and, and around Australia would be having that bet on her purely just to have that slip. Mm -hmm. of saying I had a bet on Winks when she ran in her fourth Cox Plate. Thousands I would have thought. A lot, wouldn't absolutely. you Absolutely. No, no, absolutely. Look, we weren't there in 1930 when Farlat won four races at Flemington. But this is as close as we've ever been to anything that might have resembled that. I mean, it was the depression in those days, the hold he had over this country. I've been following racing for, you know, 60 years. I've never known a day like this, a build-up like this. It's remarkable. 
And Chris Simons is in a privileged position, aren't you, Chris, behind the barriers? Yeah, I'm just actually following Winx now, and uh, it's amazing to watch how so, you know, Hugh, Hugh's so calm, she's so calm, they're just in the zone, Hugh's just absorbing the whole atmosphere, and it's amazing to hear it out here, Bruce, is just incredible. You can hear the crowd around me, but when she walked out onto the track, wow, we did they erupt. Well, there's eight terrific jockeys and horses, Chris. Well, we're hoping that you are talking to Huey at the end of it. I think that's fair. I think the whole of Australia and the whole of the racing world are hoping she can do what no one's done before. Just watching her there, that's something a lot of good horses do. They just stop and look. Maccabi Diva used to do it. I know Naturalism used to do it. Just stop and look at the crowd. They know what they're here for. She knows exactly what's going to happen. And she's just as relaxed as you like. And that she's she's a plain bay. She looks like possibly a thousand other horses, but inside there there's a heart and a lung motor that is just superior to everything around her. That, that's so true. She's not flashy, she's quite understated, she just goes about her business. People say, oh well, she knows where the line is, she knows what she's got to do. And whilst I think that might be a bit of a stretch for a racehorse to know exactly where the finishing line is, I think throughout the race she knows as she's turning how far she's got to go as the crowd uh, gets more excited as the jockey pressure comes on she responds so well she's certainly got an amazing will to win she's shown that so often debbie Capita's there and deb's been beside herself most of the day it, it, you know we, we sort of you know we love her and we we laugh a bit look at her now so she's so highly strung up right now so godolphin with a strong hand avilius from here been battled Saeed Bin Saroz only brought one horse to this race and he ran third. He beat Sunline Fields of Omar and Lonro actually in running third. It was a heck of a race. His name was Grandira. So they're going into the barrier. Matt Hill's going to call his second WS Cox plate. We're getting close, aren't we? Close to something that we've been looking forward to for such a long time. Yeah, and this is the beauty of, of these really, really good races. These really good horses all meeting each other on a day like this because I, I don't bet. I very if not ever have a bet on a horse race but this is why we watch it this is why we get excited to see the clash of these great horses and to see how the race unfolds how the jockeys all play at Argento just getting a little bit upset in the stalls there the handlers going in to come and down so whatever happens in the next two minutes it has to be extraordinary win or lose here's Matt Hill for his call of winks in her fourth box play Adelaide for Aidan O'Brien 2014. They're set for the Cox Plate. Stand by. Ready. A big roar. Link standing okay. Argento a little bit edgy. They're ready. Racing. And wins from barrier number six began beautifully. Dargento towards the inside began well. Kingsville dreams out the back after a few strides. So they complete 100 metres. Dargento on the inside of Ben Battle. They're not going fast. Rostropovich out three deep. Winx is settling a bit closer. Savvy Cope behind those horses. Further back of Vilius, the inside. A gap to Humidor. And Kingsville dream is last of all. Out of the straight, 1,600 metres to run. Dargento in front by three quarters of a length. Ben Battle. Rostropovich is three wide early. Savvy Cope behind those horses, fourth. And they were followed by Winks, who's got a lovely position at the moment. Fifth one off the fence, two lengths of Ilias Humidor. Kingswell Dream's going to be pulled up. Kingswell Dream is out of the race as they head to the back section now. 1,250 metres to go, so already some early drama. Dargento joined by the international raider, Ross Rapovich. A length and a half to Ben Battle, third as they reach the 1,000 metres, and the speed's got a lot better. Savvy Cope is fourth on the inside, two for the back. Winks. They were followed by Avilius and Humidor is last of all. Heading towards the top corner of the 850. It's Dargento and Rostropovich together. A length and a quarter, Ben Battle. Savvy Cope the inside as they reach the 750. Further back is Winks in plenty of air. A length and a half to Humidor and Avilius the inside is last of all. 600 metres to go in the Cox Plate. Rostropovich just in front of Dargento Ben Battle. Now Bowman gets moving on Winks. She's only a length and a half to two lengths off the lead, followed by Savi Cope, Rostropovich just in front of Dargento, but here she comes, and the valley roars, Winks on the outside, moves up, takes the lead from Ben Battle, then Rostropovich and Dargento into the straight of the 200 metres, it's Winks in front by a length, Ben Battle's going with her, Winks three quarters, Ben Battle, Winks is staving off Ben Horses then Rostropovich, Dargento, Semi Cope, and Kingsville.
history at the Valley. So that's how it ends, eh? That's how it finishes. Mooney Valley's found its Mona Lisa. She really is priceless, isn't she? Oh, Bruce, that's quite a line. She really is. And look at the way it all panned out for her. The pace was on. Everybody wanted to be up front. For a moment there, she was caught in a little bit of a, a bit of a battle with the front leaders. Um, but here, she would just put the race to bed in a matter of strides. We thought, that battle, is he going to put it up to her? He tried, he tried, but he couldn't. When she was on the back of Ben Battle, she was only a length and a half behind him. I knew she had him covered. If he was the one to beat, the race was over then. I think I said at the 700, it's over now because she was in the most perfect position. Huey has ridden the best race on her, I think, of all four here today. It was just perfect. So Farland, the first to win two. Kingston Town, the first to win three. And Winks to win four. Huey Bowman with Chris Simons. Let's just take a moment to absorb what's just occurred. 29 wins straight, 22 at Group 1 level, four Cox plates. It's fair to say that you and Team Winx have created another race that has stopped the nation. I can't believe it, Chris. And I really thought in the build-up to this I'd get quite emotional. I am feeling emotional, but the electricity that came through my body when I turn into the home straight just then was something that I guess I only get to feel but everyone watching oh, I don't know I'm, I'm lost, lost but everyone watching gets so much joy and pleasure out of the out of the superb ability of this wonderful horse the fact that she's been able to do it so many times consecutively uh, just speaks volumes for the management of her just, what can I say? How do you cope with the pressure, Hugh? I, I really felt it this week, I'll be honest with you, more than I have before. On Thursday, I, I was really... I, was, I rang a few close mates, actually, just to have a bit of a chat. I rang my cousin at home on the farm, Stuart, to talk about the cattle market, which I know nothing about. But, um, look, I, I just try to do things to keep my mind occupied. and. It was great coming riding last night. I know I, I, winning the Menicato and Brave Smash was, was a bit of a highlight, but it was just great to come to the races and go through the process of riding. It helped me really calm my anxiety, so to speak, and uh, I felt pretty good today. And I'm just so, so proud to be a part of this most amazing story. Oh, well, Huey, there's 40,000 people dressed in blue over there waiting for you. Go and give them what they want, mate. Just a quick cheerio at everyone home in Ireland, all, all our family in Ireland, and all our family up at Dunedoo and across New South Wales. Um, to my manager, Brian Haskins, who's been with me for 20 years, and my personal trainer, Trent Langlands. Uh, you guys have helped me be the best I can be, and we're all so lucky to come across such an amazing athlete and win, so... Just enjoy. She's apples. So she wouldn't blow out a candle. I mean, that sounds ridiculous. She looks as fresh as she was when she ran onto the track. And now she's about to come to the top of the straight. And there'll be a roar and light with rarely heard in any sporting stadium here in Australia. It's going to take his time and why not, eh? Absolutely. He needs to soak all of this in because this really doesn't happen every day. Shots are going to go all around the world. This fabulous scene of this thoroughbred on the track with a jockey on her back, that connection between the two and the adoring masses that have come here as one today. It was a complete unified.
unified nation that wanted this result and they got it. She's beaten two terrific horses, been battled in Humidor. She's beaten comfortably, she's beaten them with all the panache we expected. And now this beautiful scene we'll see as he comes back along with the crowd so close they can nearly touch him. She's just soaking this up. Look at her looking at the crowd. Anyone who doesn't think that a horse understands what it has achieved, what she's achieved, they don't know a lot about horses. and you all right down there with Chris and we see Peter Ty about to lead her back in. The Wonder Mare. Oh, Chris, absolutely exceptional what we've just uh, witnessed. Uh, describe it through your eyes. Um, it certainly hasn't sunk in, so I'm just trying to keep myself collected because when it sinks in, it's going to be very emotional. You'll have an opportunity to reflect on a video that you just took because you were so moved by the crowd, you filmed it. Yeah, I did. Um, it'll probably get buried with me. Describe the last 800 metres through your eyes because she was in the absolutely perfect spot. Yeah, she was um, going past the, the straight. The first time I was a little bit concerned she might get put three wide, but... It all just unfolded very well. Um, she got cover. The speed wasn't too strong. And if anything, they were going a bit slow. She only performs under pressure. Uh, so that was my only concern. But to see her, <laughs> to see her um, unleash as she does, I was looking for a humidor coming off her back and seeing how the others were travelling, but she had them covered a long way from home. And I'm watching the emotion from all of your staff. This huge team that is, can you describe what it feels like to be the captain of this amazing team? Undescribable. They all do great jobs. Not just the wings. Even just all the, the media, the fans. It's just gone to a whole new level. And as I say, we're not trained to, to deal with it. But thanks to it. And, and does it mean so much more when you look around and you see, have a look at the scenes here, how much she means to us in Australia, your adopted country? It's pretty special. Um, I can't say much more, I'm, I'm gassed. <laughs> Lucky the horse has got more petrol than me. You, you've been amazing this week, mate. Will you get a moment at all to sit back and actually just have some Chris time? Yeah, I will. Um, speak to this man first when I get a chance, but the next week will be unbelievable. Thanks, mate. Chris alongside him as well, the dynamic duo. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. I was just saying, it's a huge thrill. And to win any Cox Plate is great. It's, it's massive in our sport. And to um, have the following of Australia, the world, even the following of our staff, owners, Hueys, people, it really is something special. And uh, we're just privileged to be in her life. Um, it's as simple as that. Chris, thank you. Thank Not you. only congratulations, but thank you. I'll, I'll chat to Huey, who's uh, wonderful. It was a wonderful ride. You've done an incredible job, Chris. Oh, Huey, eh? And Christine. So, K Kate, Kate, you're Huey's sister, eh? Yes. <laughs> Amazing. It's unbelievable. <laughs> And all the Bowmans, eh? And, and the Wallers as well, eh? What a moment. I mean, this is such a team, isn't it? Yeah, it's sensational. They're just amazing. I don't know how they manage it, but they're just... Everybody's perfect. Christine? It's amazing. Oh, my God. They, they love their...
their dad and I'm just so proud to be here today uh, to witness that great, you know, that amazing, she did it in a canter. We're just, have you ever seen anything like it, Bruce? I haven't. I haven't either, never in a million years, not even all the way from Ireland, never. It's crazy. Oh, I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. I think it sums it up, Huey. Um, how good is this to have the closest people in your life around you on this day of days? Yeah, Bruce, you know what, they've been here all week with us and I've actually felt the build up this week more than previously. I guess it's become a reality what a, what a sensation this horse is uh, across Australia, across the world. <laughs> and uh, yeah, to have them here all week has been amazing. And thanks to my wife, Christine, for making the effort to have them here. And um, you know, Paige won't quite understand yet. Bambi might. How old's Bambi? Bambi's five, ne when it, five next month. Bambi. Paige is three. Are you? And at this way, I'm going to turn four. Yes, yeah. you are. No, it's very special. And look, we're so proud to be a part of sporting history in Australia with this wonderful horse. You gave her a beautiful ride, Huey. From us watching, it felt slightly less tense because she looked like she was in the right spot all the way. Yeah, and that was my concern. You know, I just didn't quite know how the race was going to be run. I mean, the two speed horses I felt were the overseas horses. So it was difficult for me to predict before the race the pace of the race. And uh, it worried me a bit. But look, as soon as I get on her, no matter how worried I am, once I get on her and out on the track and the feeling here at Mooney Valley with this electric crowd going to the start, believe it or not, it actually relaxed me. And I felt like I was in the zone and she was so comfortable today. I think it was the most relaxed she's been here at Mooney Valley and um, you know the race I can honestly say I just sat there and enjoyed it like everybody else. And that moment on the home turn when we all knew what was going to happen how did that feel? When I let her go I felt I heard the crowd roar and the reaction was electric and then when I asked for full effort at the 200 meter mark she must have put a gap on them because the crowd just erupted and it was a feeling that I'll remember for the rest of my life. And so will we. Congratulations. We've never had a day like it, Huey or Christine. There's never been one like it. We'll probably never see it again, Huey. Thanks, Bruce. Wonderful, wonderful. Hamish? Thanks very much, Bruce. Jim, come in. Your boy did good, Mandy. Really good. He certainly did. He did very well today. We're so proud of him. And what a magic day to be here. What a wonderful horse. And one I want to take over because there's a man here that needs to apologise. This is Matt Chapman, of course, who said that Winx was beating up on nothing. And you know what? Do you know what? He'll probably still say, Ben Battle's not that good at home. Roster Povic, he still won't think she's the world's best, but by God, in my book, she is. So there you go, Matt. They came, we conquered. Bring on anything you want to bring here. She is amazing. And please, just look at how she does it. And appreciate what she's done. You don't have to agree. You don't have to say an apology. Just watch and look and see and feel. There you go. Must be about time for an advert break now, mustn't it? <laughs> look, I, I don't think I need to no, say anything. Said Winx has said everything we need to know. And I tell you what, she's not only brilliant, you guys are brilliant for this sport. Well, beautifully said. Please keep enjoying it. Home. Oh, isn't she extraordinary? She is extraordinary, yeah. Richo, we've spoken to the Bowmans, we've seen the great mare, but there's a very cool trainer behind the scenes that just makes sure everything's meticulous, your husband. Yeah, he does. He's a bit of a perfectionist, but um, it's about one horse today, and she, she is the best in the world, and there's a lot of controversy, but um, if you want to if you want to beat her, come to us. We don't have to prove anything. She's done everything to us. That's it. And Chris's father was trying to get here and couldn't? Yeah, his, um, his parents aren't here today, so special hi to them. He's too unwell to travel, um, and he would love to be here more than anything. And our kids are at home watching on TV, so hi to them. Um, but, yeah, let's celebrate. Do they understand what your father no, and the team's done? No, they think they're going to get KFC for dinner, and Dad brings home a trophy. It's a family affair. You see Hugh with the kids, Mr. and Mrs. Bowman. It's 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 such a wonderful day. Congratulations. I know behind the scenes you've played a big role. Hey, look, I'm I'm the mother of his children and I'm, I'm his wife. And you know well, that's what these trainers need. It, the racing, it's a hard game, and um, they need someone behind them to support them. And Steph. Thank you. Good on you, Hayne. Thanks for that, Steph. And uh, so the presentation not too far away. All the news. What a day we've had. I mean, it's remarkable scenes down here. 
Winks wins the Cox Plate for the fourth time and uh, the whole of Australia is smiling.